So should shops be forced to shut down in all of this craziness? What's going on everybody? It's Charles and things are absolutely insane right now. If you've ever seen the movie Idiocracy, uh, President Camacho's speech is really like playing in the back, in the back of my head. Things have kind of gone bonkers lately and I wanna talk a little bit about how the automotive industry has responded. Some very positive, some not so much, and some really some good things that might come out of, uh, out of this for a lot of us on the other side of it. As we move forward, we need to shelf a couple of things. Any conspiracy stuff, talking about whether people are over panicking or under panicking or it was a weapon or all this, like let's put that on the shelf for now because we're dealing with what we're dealing with regardless of all of that. Some of that may be true, all of it might be true, I don't know. Let's focus on us and what we can do to get through this and come out a little bit better or at least not as bad on the other side of it. So in the states that the government has shut down non-essential business, they have deemed automotive repair, transportation repair is probably more accurate, an essential business, and I totally agree. If that train doesn't get to where it needs to go to deliver those goods, whether it's food, whether it's medical supplies, whether it's toilet paper, all of that, the plane, the over-the-road truck, the delivery cars, if those don't run, that disruption that we've experienced is exponentially worse. So I'm thankful that that's been deemed an essential business. And hopefully now the population at large really understands a little bit better how important those people are, how important that technician is, regardless of what kind of technician they are, to their daily comfort, convenience, and really health. I also hope that most people have a little bit more appreciation for all those restaurant workers and grocery store workers and hospital folks, and medical care providers, and all those people that are doing really amazing things right now. From me to you guys, thank you. Now I've heard from a lot of you guys in the automotive world about what's been going on. And I've heard everything from our shop has shut down or our business is closed down, the owners don't wanna mess with it, we're just, we're closing, we're gonna be off for a couple of weeks, and we'll come back to work strong, ready to go. That is a small category. I've heard from you in the middle. We are still open, we're adjusting our schedule, and we've made a lot of changes to our daily routine in an effort to help keep our customers safe, and really in a lot of ways, as are more important, our employees safe, love that. And then there's the third category, which I'm hearing more and more of is kind of the norm. Business as usual, we're doing nothing different. And this is where I get super disappointed, however not surprised, in the automotive industry. So for those of you that are shut down, um, I think it's a bold decision by an owner to completely close a business, and I have a lot of respect for them for making that choice. I hope for the sake of the business, you guys are getting some sort of compensation, You whether it's an unemployment or whether it's just paid from the... Uh, the owners, something, maybe you have a ton of vacation time and this isn't the best time to use it, but at least you have something. That's a small number. Shops in the middle, thank you guys for doing what you can to keep your employees working, but more importantly, keep your employees safe. This is where shops like Blair Automotive and my friend Ryan in Texas and Shop Dapp, you guys know Shop Dapp, they're doing a lot to keep their employees safe, keep their customers safe, and keep things still moving so the guys and girls can come in and still earn their living and make a paycheck. Some of the things that they're doing, I actually hope, I really hope, continue on at least at some capacity as we move down and past all of this craziness, because we're gonna get past all this craziness. Things like eliminating waiters altogether. No one is allowed to come in and wait. I love that. I think reducing the amount of waiters in a shop is a great, great, great thing. I love the shops that have a setup where you have to wait, you can. But I think we've really built an encouragement of coming in and hanging out rather than making arrangements to have your car serviced. It's less stress for everyone if the customer's not there standing and waiting. So they're doing that. They're eliminating waiters. They're eliminating basically any employee to customer contact face to face directly. So dropping keys in the night drop box, using wonderful technologies like the telephone, the tech message, an email to have all their communications. And I like that because now there's a documentation of everything really, especially on text. And you can still pay the bill <laughs> via email. They're doing the best to clean and disinfect the cars. Whether that is actually making a difference or not is tough to say. You know, there's a lot of secondary and third level sanitation and uh, disinfecting that needs to be done. We're doing door handles, keys, steering wheels, shifters, the big grossest things in a car really, because cars are gross. Uh, they're doing those. 
I worry about things like the HVAC system, the pollen filter, what is that trapping, what is that holding, what's on the dashboard, what's on the windshield, what's on all the rest of it that's not getting cleaned, but they're doing something. Some of the secondary and third level things, you know, we're, we're having employees wear gloves, which I would anyway. We're changing gloves between cars, but what happens when we grab our screwdriver when we're working on this car with our glove on? We change gloves, we grab that same screwdriver without disinfecting it. So that's kind of like the third level type stuff that, that I worry about as well. Not direct, not as directly as like grabbing a customer's steering wheel or touching their seat adjuster or inside door pull or things like that. But I do really appreciate that they're making so much of an effort to keep the guys working, service their customers, but really take their health into consideration. Also, they're doing a lot of really great stuff like supporting local business. Blair Automotive, for example, every day they're buying the guys lunch from a different local restaurant with either carryout or deliveries. And there's so many other of those shops that are doing the exact same thing. So props to all of you guys that are keeping people working, but really truly caring about your employees. Don't let this craziness stopping stop you guys from loving your employees and taking such good care of them. You know, there's a lot of businesses that say, on the front, their mission statements. We care about our customers, we love our customers, we do all this stuff for our customers. And though that may be true, but I truly believe if you are not taking that, at least that approach, if not caring more about your employees, all that stuff you said about your customers and caring about them, load of garbage. Because you cannot take care of your customers, you can't. If you don't take care of your employees first, you can't, period. Now, let's take that third group, business as usual, we're not doing anything different. To me, that seems crazy. I know there's a lot of people that are way overblowing what's been going on lately. However, that doesn't mean we shouldn't take preventative action for our employees, for our customers, to make sure that nobody comes down with this. Look, I'm personally not as worried about myself getting sick. What I'm worried about is working on Mr. Smith's car, and then the next car that comes in is little Mrs. old Mrs. Jones that uh, is elderly, I'm more worried about me transferring something to her and her getting sick. So while I'm very disappointed, I'm not super surprised at the business as usual type mentality. It's just, it's so disappointing. You know, I worked a lot of retail before I was an automotive technician and the, the front facing thing was we love our customers, all this and that, or, you know, we take care of our employees. We care about our employees. You guys have been getting hundreds of emails from companies. Here's how we're handling this, this COVID-19 craziness. And you read this and, you might read it and go, wow, that's really great. They're taking care of their employees. I'm reading this from a, a rather pessimistic and skeptical point of view. We're saying, hey, if our employees are sick, we don't want them to come to work. Well, that should be all the time. You should never want an employee to come to work sick. You're not being a hero by coming to work sick. Stay home and get better and don't get everyone else sick. So you're really not doing anything different there. I'm also reading like, hey, if our employees don't feel comfortable coming to work, we support that. And I can't help but feel like that may be happening in some businesses, but by and large, it's probably not happened. Flashback to 9-11, and that's not the same as we're dealing with now, but that was like the last biggest nationwide disruption that we had. I worked in retail, and that was what they were telling people. If our employees don't feel like they can come to work and do what they need to do, we're recommending that they stay home. What a load of garbage. The store manager basically told every employee management, lower level management from the store employee, all the way down to like the newest person. If you don't come in, we're gonna find someone that will. You are instantly replaceable. We care zero about you. We care none about your mental health. If you wanna use a vacation day or a sick day, you gotta put in a two week before request. And that's been my retail experience. I, I, I hope that that's not what happens and that's not what's happening, but I just can't come from any other standpoint of being extremely pessimistic and extremely negative, which you guys know is not me, about those kind of statements. It all comes back to if you say you care about your customers and you treat your employees that way, you're a full of it and you don't care about your customers. So what's the right choice? Do we close down completely? I don't love that. Do we work in the middle and do as much as we can while staying open and taking care of our employees and making sure that they're able to feed their family? This is one place where flat rate does not win and even for those flat rate shops, I really hope you're taking good care of your technicians, or is it business as usual? And of course, you know, I don't love that at all. If this has happened, it's out of everyone's control, yeah, it might really stink as an owner to have to pay your employees a little bit extra, give them bonuses, thank them for coming in. Technicians don't get hazard pay. Technicians don't get overtime when they're on flat rate. This is the time 
for those businesses to be able to shine. And unfortunately, I think most of them aren't going to. These are also the businesses, though, that say it's so hard to find technicians. You can't find a good technician. We, we can't keep any good technicians around. Um, well, look at how you treat everybody. And I've heard from so many of you guys throughout that range, some shops stepping up, doing huge, giving bonuses, taking care of their employees as best they can, all the way up to, yeah, if we don't come into work, we're going to get fired. So what would I do if I were a dealership technician today? I'm, I'm struggling with this. I really, really am. I'd like to think that I would just be like, I'm out, I'm staying home for a couple of weeks and I'm gonna be with my family. I don't know that I would do that. I really think, you know, today's Charles is a little different than maybe 10 years ago, I probably would have been there. I probably would have been working on the front lines, trying to do my best to make my paycheck and support my family. I really don't think I would have been brave enough to stand up for myself and do the thing that I know was right. And that can be very hard. And I totally feel for you guys that are doing it because you feel like you have to. I really, really, really do. And I probably would have been right there with you. So down in the comments, let me know what's going on in your shop. Are they taking really good care of you? Are they being awesome? Are they closed and that's a good thing? Are they closed and you're mad because now you can't earn a paycheck? Are they functioning in the middle? Or are they business as usual? I feel like this is a great opportunity to put some ideas down on paper on how we can all be a little bit better. 4%, 3%, 1%, 20% better and make being a technician even better. Now let's talk about some positive things. So that was a whole bunch of negative stuff. Let's talk about some really amazing things that are gonna come out of this. This to me says that being a technician, whether it's diesel, whether it's industrial, whether it's automotive, aviation, railroad, is still a very good, viable, reliable job and a good career to be in. And there's still tremendous opportunity to be had at a good shop, and that's the key, at a good shop. When I was at that community college a couple weeks ago, they were starting new diesel students right out of school at $28 an hour. My friends, I never made $28 an hour as a technician. What, even master certified all the you know accolades and badges on my shirt or whatever, never made 28 bucks an hour, so there's so much opportunity. Two, this to me is an incredible tell of a business and how they run, how they treat their employees at really for a lot of sh businesses, probably one of the worst times in their business history. So if I were a new technician or thinking about moving dealerships or moving shops, one of the questions I would be asking is, hey, you remember that crazy virus that happened at the beginning of 2020? What did you guys do? How did you handle it? How did your technicians fare through that time? Were you closed? Were you in that middle ground? Was it business as usual? I would be asking these questions and you know what? It might be a really painful thing for a service manager to answer that question. And I wouldn't just ask the service manager, I would ask every employee that I could, hey, what happened back in 2020 when things went all kinds of sideways? Did they take care of you? Or were you just left on flat rate and made 22 hours for four weeks in a row and uh, you know had to take out a second mortgage on your house? This to me is an incredible opportunity to get a true look at the leadership of a business, how they handle adversity, and what they truly do for their employees. Because legit, for most businesses, this is like the worst case kind of scenario. And how they handle in the worst case is usually a pretty good tell of what they're gonna do when things are just kind of not awesome all the way up to when things are really, really great. So what would I be doing if it were my shop? I think I would be taking the uh, Blair Automotive and Shop Dap route of limiting my business, taking care of my employees, understanding that this is gonna be hurtful to me as a business owner. However, it's a lot easier to get a couple more customers or explain to a customer, hey, we're on hold for a little while than it would be to find a new high-level technician, a new really great service advisor, a new good parts worker, all that, I need a better name for a parts worker, a new parts expert, there we go, a really good top level parts expert. I would be limiting as much as I could, taking care of my employees as best I could, understanding the key here, this is all temporary, and we're gonna get through it, and a lot of businesses I think are gonna come out much stronger on the other side than they were going into it. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. Let's continue this conversation down in the comments section. For all of you guys that are deeply affected by this, whether you are sick, know someone that got sick, having complete life disruption, uh, good vibes, thoughts, prayers, all of that from me and my family to you guys. Best wishes, keep your head up, keep your attitude positive. We will get past this. It's gonna be hard for a little while, but uh, let's keep our, our sanity up 
and our head up and our attitude high as best we can. And uh, let's try and capitalize on some of those opportunities that are going to come out on the other side of this, because I promise you they're going to be there. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.